Hello, welcome to the Steam Release Podcast. Joining me today, as always, is the lovely Rody. Hey, hello. <laughs> Who's coming off of a fantastically uneventful week, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but, but everything's okay now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Okay, that's good. That's good to hear. And Radio Tom, welcome back. Welcome back it, aboard. It, you you still haven't let me out of your basement, do we? Oh uh, yeah. I, so I went off on like um, Independence Day, uh, Independence Day fun with some I friends. I, and I just I forgot just, him at home. I was I was sitting down there just looking up, just like there's fireworks outside. Yeah. Maybe, I, I, I left. I left a crack in the door. I left a crack in the window, so you were getting. Oh, some now air. you tell me. Yeah, there's some. <laughs> there's some air. Now you tell me. Yep. <clears throat> the window has just a, like this view of the back of some bushes. But anyhow, um, we have for the Dilladallion. We have uh, just we've been playing some games this week. At least I have. Uh, hopefully, both of you have been able to as well. Well, the last two weeks. Uh, so the first question is, what have you been playing this week? And we'll go guest host first, Tom. So, uh, it's been a little bit of a slow gaming uh, couple of weeks. I have been playing, uh, at least since last time I was on the show, Super Magbot. Uh, the, the game that was my uh, Titan Juicy Game of the Week the, the last time I was on the show. I caught I'm you streaming it, too. I Yep, we, we, we streamed it. I've got um, the first three hours of playthrough of it on the YouTube channel. Um, I, I've been chatting with the devs as well. Um, I really, I really like the game. It is, uh, Super Magbot, for those of you who don't know, is a oh. platformer in which you don't jump. Mm -hmm. You alright? Yeah, I forgot, I just forgot to have it up on screen. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, you're fine. I, I was just like, I heard the open, I'm like, oh, did I disconnect? Um, but it is a platformer in which you don't jump. It is very much... Uh, it, it's more Super Meat Boy than it is Celeste, except for graphics and more wholesome than Super Meat Boy. Because a lot, there, there's a lot of grossness in uh, Super Meat Boy, but it's one of the smoothest platformers ever. Um, and this is a very smooth, well put together platformer in which you have a magnet laser that you use to attract and repel from different uh, magnet bars. Uh, clouds, bubbles, uh, springs that all do slightly different things as time goes on and very, very challenging. Uh, and it ramps up in difficulty over time too. It's a very well put together game. Uh, I, it's gonna be a hard one to beat for my 2021 game of the year. It's, Ooh. it's, it's very much up there. Wow. Um, it, Sorry. it's. The, the story is forgettable at the end of the day, uh, unlike Celeste, where the, the story of Celeste is gorgeous. Oh my god, it's so good. Um, in this one, the story is like, wait, what, what's, what's going on? Uh, okay, that's, that's what's going on, but I don't really care. Mm -hmm. when, 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 it, when it plays so well, it's like, I can, I can let that part go. Yeah, it's, so. this one's a bit more about the gameplay and just kind of the environment and a lot less about the, the, the plot. Exactly. Yep, uh, definitely very much in that one. And then we finally finished uh, on the stream Mass Effect One. Um, I had never, I I'd never played the the first Mass Effect. Well, technically, I played it way back when, but I I rented it for a weekend back when you could rent video games still. Oh wow! And absolutely did not like it way back when. And then picked up game pass on the xbox and was like yeah all right let's let, let's let's give this a shot and uh played through and it's actually a solid story game even though mechanically it's really really clunky and you can tell it was bioware's first in den like endeavor into this style of game mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they have much polished since mm -hmm. and you're probably playing you're playing the legendary edition right so yep, yeah, you're even you're even playing the versions that's kind of polished, <laughs> but it's yeah. still not. Yeah, like wow. the, the, it needed a lot more love than what it got. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, there there was some quality of life, but it it needed a lot more quality of life than what it got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's yeah. really that's really good to hear because Mass Effect is one series that I also haven't haven't touched. So yeah, same. Jump in. It's, it's just not 
I don't know what it is. It's just not quite the, in the my wheelhouse of games to play. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's like the the mm. action is kind of awkward, um, mm. but the the story the story beats are so good yeah. that it's the, the, it, yeah. that's so because I started the series with two, then played three, played five minutes of Andromeda until it crashed into a buggy mess. Um, and I loved those stories so much that it was like I could ignore the gameplay stuff. Like I, I even played three with the Xbox Connect uh, because you you could give voice commands to your squad mates, which was it was like it, it was pure gimmick, but it was actually kind of fun in a way. But I'm like I don't I don't care about the action. I just I love that story. It's so good. It, it is space drama y goodness. That I can I can get through the action, yeah. <laughs> to just learn more about these characters and the world around it. Yeah, I, I think I would pick it up if it was a di like different kind of yeah. gameplay rather because I would love to like play through the story basically. But yeah, yeah. I think there's some good like you know Mass Effect the movie kind of playthroughs that people do. Um, mm -hmm. I think that I think those do exist. I I haven't checked them out because I plan on playing it. But um, the, the the story from everything I know about it, the story is just it's so it's, it's basically a sci-fi TV series. So. Mm. Oh, it really is. It, it is yeah. a full-fledged drama dating sim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dating sim is, do, of course, depends on the play, like the level of that depends on the playthrough. But yeah, um, it's pretty, it's pretty neat. Um, uh, Garrus's Bay, just, just to remind. Oh everyone. yeah, no, no, no arguments there. We, uh, we, we had a relationship with Liara. Yeah, this last one because we, we, we were a really terribly character created shepherd who had the world's biggest, buggiest eyes. Like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, the character creator can uh, turn out pretty strange sometimes. It's just every guy. I love you, Liara. Let's mild our minds together. <laughs> <laughs> it's like ooh. It was just me. I oh my god. I I actually had to turn my face cam off for that bit of the game as I was just losing it. <laughs> it was it was so funny. I'm just here's bug eyed Shepherd and Liara. Like oh god. <laughs> But yeah, hey, that's what I've been playing. Yep. Um, oh, and did you pick up anything for the Steam uh, for the Steam Summer Sale? How was your wallet? Uh, actually, so we picked up the Room series. Uh, the the Room one, two, three, and four because it was on sale for ten bucks. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's a good idea. Um, Rody gifted uh, was kind enough to gift me another game. She 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 was very humble and gave me Super Magbot. Yeah. Um, she, she was a sweetheart, got me that. And then there's another game. I, I don't know if I'll spoil it yet because Rody and I are planning on playing it together. Yeah. No spoilers, yeah, only so. smiles. No spoilers, no spoilers. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll leave that hush hush for now. But she, she, she also picked me up that one. But that, my, my wallet survived the, the, the Steam sale mostly because I'm pretty broke. <laughs> yeah. Aww. I'm in a similar situation. <laughs> but, uh, Rody, uh, what about uh, you? No, no. I'll let you go first, as oh. I I have quite a pro oh, okay. prolific list of games. Well, I'm going to start off with a heavy hitter, Jesus. and that, <laughs> and that is Gris, or Gris. If it's French, it's Gris. But oh, oh, it's I think it's it, I think it's Gris. Well, I heard people no. say it's Gris, but yeah. yeah, it could be Gris. Yep. So I played Gris, and it is oh, yeah. really pretty. I'm about I haven't finished it. I've played the first couple hours. So I finished red and blue. That you, you know what that means if you played the game. <laughs> no, red and green. Um, but there's still more for me to play. The it's really it is a platformer, but it's not a precision platformer. There's always plenty of leeway. The puzzles are interesting. There's kind of almost Metroidvania type puzzles, but not quite. It's more linear. You're not gonna have to backtrack through the whole game. It's all about keeping you in that experience where it's a very contemplative game and you're just kind of thinking. Like you gotta you gotta There's, be able to enjoy it. Uh, we've lost Tom. No, we lost we've Tom! Lost... No <clears throat> There's Tom. No. Okay. Well that was weird. Welcome Sorry. back. <laughs> no problem. Um but yeah, I, uh, I've, I'm only a little bit in, and I have to say, I, I get the hype. I get the hype for Gris. 
Nice. It I, looks so uh, pretty. You wanna you wanna wait until you're feeling like contemplative or you just wanna relax. Um, that that's that's this type of game. Don't don't jump okay. into it expecting like a, a tight platform or anything. It's just it's very it's like taking a breath while sitting on a hill. Ooh. Yeah, nice. that's what it's like. You're just kind of <sighs> Just kind of while you look at the view. Because basically every single panel, like at, you can screenshot any moment in this game and it looks like a wallpaper background for your mm. desktop. That's awesome. I, I was thinking if I was taking a deep breath at the top of a hill, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Me too, yep. Tom. Me too. Yeah. But yep, it's absolutely recommended. Um, besides that, my brother and I got caught up on Final Fantasy XIV. We're done with all the patches. Nice. We've Yay. done all the instances. We're now basically like doing some of the old stuff we never did unsynced. Um, mm. So we're doing that together. But uh, awesome. other than that, we're we're all done. And so we got to figure out another game to play together at least until November. <laughs> so have you, have you guys yeah. done uh, It Takes Two yet? Not yet. I do want to. I saw a girlfriend yeah. reviews video about it takes two, and that kind of actually sold me on it because I wasn't sure about it. But girlfriend reviews, it, um, it looks so, it looks so good. Yeah, really convinced me. It it does look very good. I need to check it out <laughs> again. Like the developer, oh, what's his name? European name. Oh, I'm I forget again. the guy's Hello. name, but he's a genius, a mad genius. Like he kind of reminds me of like Tommy Wiseau. But he actually makes really quality stuff. He's like Tommy Wiseau, but he makes really if, if high quality good, stuff. Yeah, yeah, Tommy Wiseau. If Tommy Wiseau was, out, was, it was good, yeah. intentionally talented, not just accidentally, okay. <laughs> not an accidental genius. This guy is legit genius. <laughs> um, but his personality is very uh, eccentric. <laughs> yeah. So. Did you? Did you say you, you got anything in the Steam sale? The only thing I got was actually a gift from someone else, and that is Cuphead. Ah, uh, So okay. I got Cuphead as a gift, and I'm very happy about that, because I've been wanting Cuphead, and they were able to get it for a very low, high discount, I think, so. Nice. I, I can tell you haven't played it yet, because you are still in a good mood. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> It's such a good game, but it is so evil. Punishly hard. But the thing is, I know people who aren't good at platformers who have beaten it just through, like, oh, okay. determination. But then, of course, there's easy mode, which I'll be playing in odd, because I am not 10 anymore. So, <laughs> but yeah, that's me. Yes. That is me. Uh, Rody, what about you? I played a lot of games. Okay, oh. my so, keyboard is ready. Okay, so the first game I played was The Call of Paper Plane. It's a game that we have spoken about on the podcast. And um, I played for about 10 minutes and I was annoyed with it. And <laughs> I asked for a refund because it's like the actual gameplay is just just really annoying. The control the, It doesn't control very well and you can't always see when something what the obstacles are and um it's and also there's it, it's slightly buggy as well and yeah if this was this was bad the control mm. yeah it i yeah, i even put it on like easy like like relax mode there's a relaxing mode and i was not relaxed so luckily I'd gotten it in the sale and played it straight away so I was able to get a refund for it. So that was the Call of Paper Plane. So you, you basically you have to collect all these um like paper balls. Yeah, yeah, and it's like you it's, it's the steering on it is just really not great. It's just not great. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I was just annoyed. I would have preferred it if it was just you were just going through, like, enjoying the landscape or something like that, and maybe, mm -hmm. maybe um, avoiding some obstacles. But you know, other than that, yeah, no, or I or seeing little not. secrets or whatever, just kind of like, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, that would have been nice. But no, mm -hmm. this, this was not good. Yeah. Um, then I picked up and played down in Bermuda. Mm. Ooh, and this one. Yeah, so this is the 
the one this is from the developers of agent a and so i was really looking forward to playing this um because i was looking forward to those kind of um interesting story and puzzles but this is not like agent a the puzzles are a lot simpler there is um there's a slight hidden object kind of thing to it as well you have to find these sort of like little glowing balls everywhere and but it, it's it was still delightful to play um so i so yeah i i would i would recommend this i definitely wouldn't get it at full price because i think it was like the full price was something like it, it was over 10 pounds or something maybe 15 pounds and i just like yeah no i'm not paying paying uh that much for it i think how how I, it, it's three and a half hours mm-hmm. as well um, <clears throat> so maybe five pounds or something yeah which is what i i, I think i picked it up for mm-hmm. so, so you're yeah. happy with it because you got it on that price probably yeah definitely yeah. definitely mm-hmm. and then um i played another game that we spoke about on the podcast um sudoku um rpg um, because I was very, very intrigued by this. I was very intrigued by this. Um, I'm not someone who's played Sudoku before, so I um, so that was a bit of a learning curve for me. Um, although it does give you like a small tutorial, and <laughs> there is like a an easy mode that you can go into as well. Um, it was um, I like the. Um, I did, I did like the the style of the the graphics like the aesthetic I like the music um sorry no no it it's but it's repetitive but it's still enjoyable there's a little bit of grinding in it um there uh you are basically just trying to grind for money to get these kind of like relics to put on your person to make the um to get less attacks from um, the your enemies, or they and they throw stones on the board so you can't see the the numbers or or whatever, and you have to get like destroy the rocks first, so that slows you down. So basically, yeah, you're getting these relics to to um, make it, the the game slightly easier. Or, or but yeah, it's fun. Every time you do a square, you hit the enemy, um, and uh, it's however the story's not that great um it it, it's like oh this might get interesting but there's not enough story in it to keep you that in into it and i would have preferred there to be some kind of stats stat build in there some kind of leveling well no there is leveling but there's no again there's no stat builds or anything like that so it's just yeah it's it's uh uh I feel like it's this so, game would have been very good on the 3DS. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah, yeah. I think, and or on, you know, on your mobile phone, if you have, like, a... or um, an iPad or something similar. So, yeah, I think it's it's good. It's it's short. Um, it's... I clocked up 96 minutes of, on it. Fun little game. Fun little game. Yep. And it's only um, three bucks. Yeah. And the next one, um, I played... Half past fate. Um, so yeah, um, we weren't sure how this game sort of like mechanically plays because it didn't look quite like a visual novel. Um, but it, it it is about um, three couples, and you're basically seeing them get together over eight and a half years. And seeing their story, their lives sort of intertwined with like everybody else who you're who you're watching, kind of thing. And it's a lot of it is fetch quests. Um, uh, again, I really like the the style of the graphics. I, I it's really unique. Um, I liked a lot of the characters. One of the characters I would just was just like. This person is not a nice person. I why have you done? Why why are they in the game? I don't <laughs> want them. It's like I feel they're they're not a great partner for this person. But anyway, um, the, oh yeah, the story's a really good payoff. The 
the end of it, it oh, it's really it's really slow to get going because they're doing kind of like a tutorial thing and you're trying to get to the front of the queue to get coffee and you've got to go and do these fetch crests for people with three people in front and it's just like why don't you just buy their coffee for them just say hey how about I buy you coffee if you let me to the front of the queue I'll pay with my credit card someone wanted to to buy some coffee and they didn't have enough change and he's like oh I don't have enough change let me go and find some change it's like no 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 just pay for it with your credit card just pay for it oh my god it was just so annoying um so yeah it, and the story's not quite linear it get, keeps going backwards and forwards backwards and forwards in in and out of time and I thought that really kind of was unnecessary. Mm -hmm. It's not like you didn't get what was going on. It is just like a useless thing to put in there. I, th I feel. Yeah, it's it it's a non-linear that story that would that should have been better told linearly. So yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But uh, at least yeah. you had to play with a couple puppies in that game, though. It, it's true. There was a there was a cute doggo that we got to throw the <laughs> bally for. It was so there, cute. there there were two doggos. It was. Oh, there was God. Peanut, and I don't remember the name of the second one. Oh, me neither. There's that second one. I don't think. Oh yeah, yeah. We have to get the bony for that. For that. Oh, it's Chai. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Peanut yeah, and Chai. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, so I, I I played this on stream, and I just felt like I was just reading everything out. There was just there was a lot of even though. There was a lot of interacting with things. It was mainly, you know, you are reading reading a lot of things mm -hmm. out. Uh, but then I played the follow-up, um, Half Past Fate, Romantic Distancing, offline. Um, oh, yeah, Half Past Fate is... I clocked in at six hours, uh, six and a half hours on that. So. Oh, wow, okay. Six and a half hours. All right, a little um, bit short for 20 bucks, but... Um... Yeah, no. I, I Again, I, I got it in the sale, yeah. so it's like that felt like it was worth worth picking up or mm -hmm. because again i did like the ending but the rest of it can go to hell <laughs> <laughs> um, at least the ending was worth it though yeah, yeah. um romantic distancing i felt like it was going somewhere it was really interesting story and it was nice i really really liked this couple and how they were navigating um by just starting a relationship and having to navigate that fresh new relationship in lockdown and um, and then it, it kind of you feel like it kind of abruptly ends and it was just like wait no you could have taken this other places and they just didn't I feel like it came up short and it mm. is I clocked in at 37 minutes oh wow that's uh, that's a lot shorter yeah really short really short but yeah, it's a shame it could have been a bit more. But um, the next game I played was Sizable. And this was a real surprise. It was a real surprise. Um, I really, really enjoyed this. Really enjoyed this. It's not just um, your shrinking and. It, it, I mean, you are shrinking and making things larger, but you're unlocking when you do that you unlock a certain thing or something else happens and you're getting like these objects to put on these squares to unlock the next level and um, if you find all the turtles as well in these puzzles that will unlock an another set of puzzles and it's just like <gasps> and they're still adding to the game with more levels and it's just it's a delight I really 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 enjoyed this this is such a great surprise i recommend picking this up I, I did get it on the sale not i'm not sure how much it is full price but yeah it, really enjoyable really enjoyable uh, it looks like it's ten dollars right now but um you sound but, pretty sold but, yeah oh absolutely absolutely um i clock i did clock in two and a half hours so yeah maybe maybe wait when it's on sale but they are adding more levels so mm -hmm. it, it's it's still it's still good and um, next and last one, I I played Cozy Grove. Cozy Grove. Oh, sweet. So I've been playing this. Um, it, you, you're supposed to just play this at like 
every like couple of hours a day sort of thing um you go to you're a scout you're a spirit scout and you go to an island where there are spirits that you're supposed to help and um each day you're you're the the bears on the island they give you tasks to do and um you each task helps you bring you close to finding out um what is keeping them there on the island what what um what have they what are they remorseful about maybe um that's something bad has happened so you got to find that out um the i really like the style of the um game the only criticisms i have is some of the um some of the items don't come up enough even like the lower level ones and um you're kind of like okay well i can't buy it I, i've got to like keep going round and round to the thing respawns again and then maybe if i dig something up i'll get a potato um and and also there are these um uh essences and i the basic ones are impescent essences but i never seem to get like enough of them even though i've done fishing i've like dig things up i'm giving imps their favorite food or whatever it's i still like i have zero right now and you need those things for like crafting and stuff like that got a lot mm. of bird essences now because i like have loads of birds on my on my campgrounds but yeah it's like it's so so yeah they they need to i think there needs to be like a rebalancing thing happening mm -hmm. but it's it's still a lot of fun it's and they are like doing updates and everything um, I did get a lot of things in the summer sale, but uh, and I'll run through them maybe right at the end if we have if we have. Okay, time. absolutely. Have Alrighty, well. Oh, uh, one one last thing? thing though. No, actually, I will leave that to the end as well. I'll leave that okay, to okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alrighty. <laughs> Um, then, next up, we have catch-up, a short catch-up list this week. Just a few games that we want to uh, go over. But uh, starting with from September 7th. This is These are games from September 7th, 7th through September 10th. Starting with Colony Siege. Colony Siege combines the best of RTS and tower defense, including base building, mazing, and unit physics, Defend Earth's remaining colonies using an arsenal of deadly weapons to torch, slice, throw, and impale swarms of alien invaders. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one this one has uh, a, a nice combination of that RTS plus tower defense. I think the 3D style does its job. It's not particularly pretty, but no. it's not ugly. So it's it's in that nice kind of just comfortable. It works. So. The the, u the units themselves look fine, like the the mm -hmm. units and buildings, but the background, mm. like the the arena itself, I'm just struggling yeah. with. The yeah. arenas and the UI are both kind of like they're there. They they fulfill yeah. their function, but I don't think they completely detract from it. But they really don't add. No. Yeah. So but like the, the the UI is, I mean, especially in a. Uh, like a real-time RTS, you you need simple and clear. Like I I, mm. I can I can understand the UI, but mm -hmm. the, the background and everything is really just yeah. Poof. It's it's not it's not great. It's yeah. not great. And some of the buildings look too similar to <laughs> the background. Yeah. Uh, they they could have like made a bit more of a distinction with that, but no oh dear. Oh. It actually looks a lot like an RTS made back in say 2002 or something. It's kind of it's kind of it's kind of like I don't know if it's yeah. intentional, but it has a very 2000s early 2000s look to it. Um, Almost like the cutscenes in those. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's like the cutscenes in those. And then there's um I don't know, it I do like the speed of it. It seems to have a pretty healthy like speed and there seems to be some uh some good, you know, Good, uh, good controls, and the and the UI is not annoying, but uh, yeah, I'm just not I'm not super skilled at these kind of kind of games, though. I I was I was much better at these years ago. Like I, I would do StarCraft competitively mm. for a period of time, and I'm not Ooh. quick I'm not quick enough to keep up with it anymore. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't have that yeah. ten year old energy anymore. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. 
But it yeah. has been very well received by uh, by Steam. It has 104 reviews that are 92% positive. So, so it, I mean, as long as it plays good, you can kind of let a lot of the background stuff go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, this is eleven pound thirty nine. Yeah, fourteen ninety nine US. So not not badly priced. Um, and he, among the positive, it looks like the primary things folks are criticizing are the aesthetics, because mm. uh, most of the rest. Um, oh, even the negative review was just like not as not not at full price, but buy it on sale review. So okay, gotcha. Uh, at least as far as the the English negative <laughs> review I found, but yeah, um, that sounds it sounds pretty good. So if you're into RTS and tower defense, uh, this might be something you want to check out. Uh, it is developed by Feeny Fugle Games, uh, who are based out of Seattle, Washington. Uh, next up is Stones of the Revenant. Retro arcade style platformer with six unique playable characters. Team up with local co op or try to defeat the Revenant and his mission uh, and his minions solo in this challenging quest to save the realm of the living. Uh, first of all, it is really cute. It's got kind of that uh, chibi. Yeah, kind of chibi, sort of like a deviant art chibi, but it is kind of cute. Um, and this is developed by a solo dev uh, named Arlen from the US. It, it looks like um, the graphics are the like Wonder Boy and Monster World kind oh, of. Oh yeah, that's yeah, yeah Wonder Boy. Yep, yeah, definitely hits that note. Uh, I like the villain's look. He's just a skeleton with a throne. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, artistically, this looks really cute. I'm I'm not mm. running into a ton of like the actual gameplay. Yeah. Um, like, like like watching the videos, it looks fairly smooth. There are like a few times like I'm seeing someone like you just walked past a skeleton and took no damage. It was it, it was kind of strange. Like I don't know if it was like a a block or a roll or some iframes, but there, there's a few bits that watching haven't made a ton of sense. But mm-hmm. otherwise, it looks. It looks like just cute beat 'em up fun. Yep. The features include six uh, playable characters, two player local co op, retro style arcade gameplay, pixel art, and of course the uh, chiptune soundtrack. Uh, but it does, uh, the, the game does require a controller, and the one negative view is saying that you cannot remap the keys. Um, yes. For folks oh. who do do controller, um, remapping the keys is kind of important because some people are left handed. So, yeah. and of course, some people are just more used to like the Nintendo or the Xbox or the PlayStation layout. So, just let people remap their keys seriously. Yeah. <laughs> um, unfortunately, there's only three user reviews, and it's um, seven pound nineteen. Yep, uh, that's nine ninety nine USD. Um, but yeah, Arlen, the developer I'm talking to, Arlen, dude, let you let people remap keys, but it looks great. So. Yeah. Next up, we have Tin and Kuna. Spin and smash through the colorful, chaotic worlds of Tin and Kuna. Explore levels filled with puzzles and peril. <laughs> so they really need that. Yeah, uh, this is kind of um, this is developed by a somewhat larger um, indie developer over in Manaus, Brazil. Um, I'm not. 100% sold on the aesthetic, but it does seem to have pretty fun palette forming, at least. It's... Most of the time, they're just all curled up, so yep. you don't get that, um... I don't know, it's, it's not as fun as seeing a mm-hmm. full character walking mm-hmm. around, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So yeah. I think... I think that was maybe a mis- mistake. You should have just had them curl up and roll only on like special attacks, not have them do that all the time. Have yeah, them like that yeah. Most of the time, really, yeah. I mean, Sonic did sort of the same thing for the most part. You so spend most of your time as a blue ball in Sonic. But there's still moments where you're running because when you're a blue ball, I'm trying to remember, what are the things that you can't do as a blue ball that you can do as a... I think you can't accelerate as just a blue ball, like, unless you do the down hold thing. Um, yeah, that's, you, that's you how, gradually that's how you lose. Do the, kind of like the spin dash. 
I think in um, this game in the- you you you're you only go slower when you're not rolled up. So that's just, that's not. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. you're right there. It gives so you there, no there's reason. A few, few moments I see him like out and about, but yeah, not 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 nearly as much. I uh, mm-hmm. I, I retract my statement. Yep. Yeah, so I think that's the I think that's the functionality here, and probably why you don't see the character rolled up, uh, not, not rolled up. It's just always rolled up. Hmm. Mm. In which case, I'm always like, okay, could there have been like a like a roll like a rolly character that you know I don't know, ha- is more visually interesting when they're yeah. rolled up? They don't just look like a tennis ball. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, because because it's like you know the the banner. Those characters look interesting, and I would mm-hmm. like to. You're really cute. Yeah. A hamster so. inside a hamster ball. Mm. A hamster inside like a semi-transparent yeah, hamster cute. ball. Yeah, yeah. Then you could like yeah. see the hamster running inside it. <laughs> 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 like monkey ball kind of. But yeah, that uh, Tin and Kuna. Black River Studios. It's based in Manaus and it's called Black River probably because it's right next to the Rio Negro, which is the Black River that flows into the Amazon. So there's this big like black brown divide as it flows as the waters mix it's really okay. cool um but yeah so it's uh i was like oh that's a clever name for the studio Mon also Mouse. the price is like yikes it's 23 pounds 79 yeah dude 29.99 us that is a lot um and i i suspect the game isn't well okay let me see the reviews i'm seeing anywhere from 6 to 25 hours but uh, huh. I don't think it's normally 25 hours. Right. Yeah. No. Mm, I don't I don't know how long it is. There's not a lot in the description, but I suspect this was put on consoles and then on Steam as an afterthought and they didn't adjust yeah. the price. They, there's only 3 user reviews, so it's not really been like well received mm-hmm. on Steam. But maybe maybe uh, people out there, this is a game for you, and you're just waiting, waiting for it to um, uh, come down in, in the sale. Yep. And finally, for a catch-up list, it's been taken us a long time to get around to it, but this is the next game from the developers of What Remains of Edith Finch, The Unfinished Swan. Enter the surreal world of the unfinished swan and explore a mysterious hidden kingdom by splatting paint to reveal the world around you. I feel like I've seen this before. Like it's already been, it was already released good a good while ago, and be- before it like September here. Um, so mm. or I've seen Must maybe some- council. Maybe I don't I don't know because I've so I've seen that style of you know just things splatting and oh, yeah wasn't there was that in 2012 it was in 2012 oh it's in 2012 yeah. originally oh okay so it's a port there mm. there was um there was that other game about the blind girl and saw watercolors and as you walk around mm. with her like the world gets painted in with watercolors that has a kind of similar aesthetic to this I think. But um, mm, I see. Uh, I have, but look, so it says unfinished swan was great. So yeah, and it's um, a, a lot of a lot of people are agreeing with you. It's uh, starting up very positive um, with four hundred and eighty-two user reviews, and it's mm-hmm. at eighty-four percent. Yep. So I wonder if Giant Sparrow has any future games. Oh, mm, oh no, this is all. It just takes me to the publisher site for Annapurna. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Um, but um, I am kind of curious if the because I checked their uh, social media and all they said like the creators of Edith Finn, what remains of Edith Finch and the Unfinished Swan. I'm like, okay, so, those are their only. So I'm on their website right now. Those are their only. Oh, that's two. it. Okay, so if this came out in 2012, it's been it, nine it been years. Around in about yeah, oh. we're all, we're almost on a decade. Wow, because it's it's 2011. Wonder or what it's, uh, tw- it's 2021. On, <laughs> yeah, 2021. Yeah. <sighs> it's been a long time, oh my, my word. Yeah. We're getting old, remember, do we? I kind of... We're getting show old. I kind of wonder if the developers ended up working at different companies now, or... Yeah. Yeah. yeah it might have it might have gotten picked up. Yeah. The the, the devs might have... They, they might, like, still officially have the business, but they both might have jobs for other companies now. But... 
yeah, you can get it in the bundle with uh, what remains of Edith Finch uh, mm -hmm. for ten pound twenty five, or on its own for eleven pound thirty nine. Mm -hmm. yeah, and her last blog post was December twenty eighteen. Ooh, wow, that's a while ago. They um, the first the the reviews are eighty four percent positive with four hundred eighty two user reviews. Seventy six percent of the recent thirty nine reviews are positive. Um. But yeah, that is the unfinished Swan. So, uh, all right. So if you played the, you, you can finish the whole collection from the devs if you play this game after playing Edith Finch. Next up, we have the release list, starting with very simply named Arid. Discover the mysteries of the Atacama. Explore the abandoned mining networks, evade the scorching sun, and survive the environment in one of the most arid places in the world. Arid is a free survival game made by students from Breda University. Mm -hmm. So this, yeah, this is another student student game, and it aesthetically, once it finally the video finally gets to it, it looks really nice. <laughs> I was quite impressed. Um, oh wow. They, they just need to work a little bit of grammar in the in the explanation mm -hmm. or in the, uh, the 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 thumbnail paragraph. Yeah. But... <laughs> wow, oh, it just looks. It's amazing. All right, some of the lighting effects aren't super well done, but that mm. so lighting is the most difficult part of it. So I'm not gonna like put that on students necessarily mm. <laughs> no lighting roast is them. roast them lighting now, is Dewey. actually one of the most difficult things to do in video game development but um ruin a potential prolific career yeah. <laughs> <Do it. laughs> the team was called sad viscasha which that's kind of an odd name but um oh you can pet a bunny that's nice to know <gasps> i just saw that yeah oh. you can pet a bunny Wait, and it's got a picture of a bunny yep the bunny has a picture of a bunny, or do you have a picture of your bunny? That is your love of who you go you're supposed to be going back to after this long journey. Aww. <laughs> and it's free. Favorite price, and it's standing out very positive with 494 user reviews, uh, 85 85 percent uh, positive. So yeah, this is ex exploration mm -hmm. and survival type of game. Yeah. I encourage what I encourage checking it out. Eighty-five percent with with it being free, though. Hmm. People are being. Uh, I wonder what the criticisms are. Uh, mm. Let me see. Okay, the game is twenty minutes long. That's not bad. It's free, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so there's so. It crashes. It crashes. Oh, crashes. That's as soon good. as you get to the crafting table. So uh, terrible back music background, and you can't turn. Turn subtitles off. Mm -hmm. um, ter terrible music, menu editing. Um, terrible beginning because you don't know what happened because the whole screen is black till it's over. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So there's definitely some valid complaints there. Also, it seems that people don't. Some people don't necessarily know where they're going with it, but right. it is still mostly positive. Most folks did enjoy it, and again, it's it's free. <laughs> so. Yeah. If you're down to spend 30 minutes, even if you don't enjoy, enjoy it, it's 30 minutes. Yeah. So, all right. So next up, um, I look forward to their future games, especially their um, environment artists. Yeah, uh, no kidding. Yeah. Next up is Wonder Boy Asha in Monster World. I wonder what their secret of their power is. Um, <laughs> the, the adventures of Asha, the little warrior, begin. Together with her blue sidekick, Pepe Lagoo, Lagoo, <laughs> she will run. Th <laughs> Pepe Logo, <laughs> she will run through numerous stages and save the monster world from the darkness. I don't know. I kind of miss the 16-bit pixel art. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's as it's the 3D is. It seems a little bit crunchy. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's another case of it feels like the the mobile game ads. Yeah. Oh, it does. Yeah. Um, like the other monster, uh, world that was, um, done mm -hmm. was so much better. 
Mm-hmm. The, the way they updated it. Um, this seems like... Oh, that... This, this seems like, oh, that did really well. Why don't we give this a try? But without putting in the full effort like mm-hmm. the, that other team did. That, that other team had real passion for uh, Monster World and this just seems like lazy. Yeah. yeah. But hey, if you like, if you really like this game, they've, they've redone it. <laughs> and it's uh, $35. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. If if I would be more tempted if they have like a classic mode, that's something they did the last one where they gave you an option to play it in two different art styles. But yeah. I don't see that here. But I'm not gonna pay thirty five bucks if I'm not gonna use the new and improved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, yeah. Thirty one pound forty nine. Mm-hmm. There are fourteen user reviews and eight starting at eighty five percent positive. But... Yeah, we we, well, we have our issues with yep, it. Yep, indeed. So next up, we have Onirike. Onirike is an original 3D adventure puzzle and platformer video game which takes place in an intricate open world designed with a non-linear narrative and presented with a peculiar audio-visual aesthetic. Yeah, so I guess you play a little zombie, and it, and, and the environment art is sort of... Like Tim designed Burton-y. around that very mm-hmm. Tim Burtony, um, so it's like intentionally ugly, I guess. <laughs> it has a matching aesthetic and stuff, but it's like it, there's a, there's still a charm to it. Yeah, there's a charm. Mm-hmm. It's just not charming me. <laughs> but but there is a charm. The puzzles look interesting. I'm seeing quite a variety of that in just the trailer, and uh, the yeah, it looks like it looks like it could be fun 3D. Yeah, so some of it looks like it look like very interesting, but there's other parts that look quite barren. <laughs> and yeah. I, I think, um, and yeah, they they should have shown. Well, at least in the trailer, they should have shown more of the bits that looked a bit more filled and interesting. Um, but I mean, they're being honest, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and you should have really put more more things around to make it just mm-hmm. look a bit more. Interesting bit more interesting but come come alive a bit more yep yeah. the the developer is devilish games who are based out of vienna spain not that vienna the vienna in spain um and there are seven developers and um, it's standing at well there's there's only eight user reviews and it's 11 pound 39 yep 14.99 usd so check it out Next up, uh, more. We I feel like we need one of these every week. Uh, more. Uh, our, wait, real. FMV. FMV. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> more FMV. Uh, joy. The list by Dan Th- Trimble. A young man is interviewed by the police, only to turn up dead a week later. Three years have passed. A special agent from Santa Fe navigates the police database in order to solve the mystery. So, so yes, this is already on my wish list. <laughs> I feel this much. Oh yep. my god! But, but yeah, um, yeah, this is like her, um, and I'm like the the data, the way the database looks. You know, it doesn't look that great, but mm. I'm definitely interested to see the the acting in this, and it, even if it's kind of bad. That's just still fun to watch in stream, I think. I, I'm mostly intrigued because it's saying it's non-linear. Because mm. that, yeah, that, that that was my original fear. It was more just kind of click through story. Um, mm-hmm. But that was uh, her was non-linear as well, so it probably plays ex- like nearly oh, exactly, exactly like that. Yeah. Gotcha. Hmm. So yeah, you just got to find the right word which unlocks like a video from the database and then you get a part of the the story so yeah yeah, it's um if they've done it well then yeah this will be like an interesting play at first Um, i was thinking the actor was playing multiple different characters but no it's like it's one character it's just you know unlike tv characters and like TV characters, he actually like you know changes clothes mm. <laughs> each day. So um, he, he's just wearing different clothing, and he is intentionally playing uh, the same character. So. Not that I was the 
And it's standing at 100% positive with 18 user reviews. And there is a demo, which is always nice. Yeah. Yep. But um, it's £4.79. Five ninety nine US. Ooh, and they've got like, that's oh no, it's just redacted. Okay, <laughs> I was thinking, oh, do they have spoilers here? I kind of want to look. Nope, nope, you can't look at them. <laughs> uh, so I'm seeing anything from like four to ten hours of gameplay. Oh, that's pretty hefty, actually. Yeah. Uh, especially since it's only six dollars. Six USD. But yeah, a hundred percent. That's impressive. We'll see how long it lasts. Mm -hmm. Once Rody gets her hands on it, it may be. <laughs> and just and just tears tears poor Dan Trimble a new one. So, but we shall see. More more, more careers being ruined here at the Steam Release Podcast. <laughs> We're coming for you, students. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, but yeah, it looks fun. Um, I'm really curious who who killed this guy, and if you get to find out who. It was Dewey. <laughs> Money's on Dewey. I, uh, I cannot confirm or deny. Next up <laughs> is Secret Agent HD. Return to the remote island classic world of rewards and traps in the HD remake of Secret Agent. Guy 006, not to be confused with 007 for legal reasons. Through <laughs> puzzles and arcade challenges of your favorite missions. Then uncover the whole new episode loaded with all new puzzles, enemies, challenges, hazards, and help 006, not to be confused with 007, finally <laughs> defeat DVS. This has the exact same aesthetic as a PC game I played called Math Blaster that um, yep. was made back in 1993... Um, it's got a very similar, like, even the sound effects are the same, if you listen for those. Um, yeah, it's, it's very, was this very old. Was originally made by the same folks who did Math Blaster? Because, I mean, th th this is an old remake. Yeah, I almost wonder, because it's got a super similar... This is, this is, this is where American as opposed to Japanese pixel art was at the time, I believe. So, for platformers. Yeah, yeah. The other game it reminded me of it was uh, on NES. It was the Bugs Bunny's Birthday Bash, is what this game is really reminding me of. Obviously, it's not Bugs Bunny in the slightest, but just yeah. 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 Word, words are failing me. <laughs> um, I'm not a fan of the sort of floaty movement and such, but mm. I do know that's how these games were at the time. Yeah. So with it being a remaster, okay, I get. I guess that's what you're it's going for. It's just faithful to yeah. what it was. Yeah. Um. Let's see, help Double Six recover the Red Rock Rover blueprints by guiding him through all three original episodes in HD, and uncover sixteen exciting new episodes in the all new Secret Agent Episode Four with challenging puzzles, action oriented hazards, and rewards that will have you aiming for a spot on the top of the leaderboard. Seven new enemies, two new power ups. Breakable blocks, secret level, and more. Okay, so they so they did add some con uh, content. That's pretty good. And yeah. judging by their views, folks are pretty excited to um, go back and play kind of a, an updated version of it. Well, yeah, it's standing out 100 percent with 20, 27 user reviews, and it's five pounds seventy nine. Alrighty, yep, seven ninety nine USD. Now, on to our first July game, Thursday, July 1st, with Stand By Me. What was that, darling? Uh, darling? <laughs> darling, darling, stand. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Colorful and groovy physics game about navigating with magnets and caring for your friends in a journey through a dynamic picture book series. Uh, this was developed by Garou Studios, who we recently talked about one of their other games, um, Cardomante. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is the same That's dev. Cool. And at the time, we were looking at this one at game and like, oh, I don't know, it doesn't have the same kind of soul as Cardomante, but for a simple 2D puzzler, like kind of simple aesthetic 2D type puzzler, I think it does quite well. Yeah, it looks challenging, too, like the, the uh, the, the, the physics mechanics of mm -hmm. what you're uh, connecting to gravity-wise and moving around from or bouncing around 
It looks very clever. Mm-hmm. Very clever. <laughs> and the little heads, like they're just little balls with faces drawn on them, are quite cute. They're really cute. Actually, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is yeah, this looks interesting. Um, it's obviously not in my wheelhouse, but yeah, this is this is quite nice. It's six pound ninety, so I'm I'm wondering, it, it, even though it's cheap, I am wondering about the price because I'm seeing like people putting in an hour to three hours in there. So it, you know, it is it is a short game, um. But it is standing out 100% positive with 11 user reviews. Yep. Yeah, this one, this one's going to go on my wish list. It, it, it looks cute enough uh, that I maybe maybe at some point I might give this one a go. Nice. Yeah, and and sort of like uh, Magbot, this one kind of has a new twist on what um, on a, on the physics it's going for. So it's got a exactly. slightly different way. Mm. Yeah, Stan, and that is Stan by Me, developed by Garoa, which is a studio based out of Rio de, de, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. So, uh, yeah, that's Stan by B. Stan by Me. Now, next up from Wednesday, July 7th, um, the, the Steam release sale was going on, so basically no one released games. <laughs> but uh, Wednesday, July 7th, we have Eastern Exorcist. I need to turn my head around in a circle, puke out, pee, soup, tell you that your mother in... Yep. Uh, Eastern Exorcist is a stunning 2D side-scrolling action RPG set in a fantasy Eastern world with the vicious spirits and monsters. Play as a skilled exorcist against chaotic evil to fight your way through the brutal world and experience different stories of joy and sorrow. Mm-hmm. This one has gotten extremely reviewed with over like 3,000, almost 4,000 reviews. Uh, this and, must have came out of early access. Yeah, it was in early access. And after coming out of early access, it actually went up in review score. So slightly. Nice. Which is a pretty good sign. You're kind of a rarity anymore. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It look, this looks really beautiful. Really beautiful. Mm. And it's like... I I like the the backgrounds and it's it you know it's kind of like depressing setting. There's enough like color going on that makes it uh, look mm. interesting. Yeah, I like how a lot of the characters. So have you ever, have you seen like the Chinese like face masks when they do like play? I forget what they're called. Yeah. It's not no play. That's the Japanese version. But the Chinese version, they have these sort of operas and plays where they have the like, crazy makeup and masks. And I like how mm. the creatures, the characters, and the monsters look like those but it's been toned down to make it look like what those masks are supposed to represent That's kind that. of yeah they've done a really good job of that um it, it it looks really nice the i like the they they have kind of the shadow puppet animation a bit you know where they have the the bones attached to the arms and you just kind of like you can move them independently but they also do just a little bit of additional animation to make it look more natural um, and less stiff, so it's, uh, yeah, it's really good looking. This is going on my wish list. And there's a, and there's a free demo. And, um, really, really fantastic price of £12, and it's 11%, 11% off right now. 15 12 that's, that's a really good price, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me see, what's it like? Most of the reviews are in China, wait, is it available in English? Yes, it is available in English. The audio is in Chinese, though. Um, are there any English reviews? Okay. Uh, very fun reminds me of Muramasa. Um, yeah. And it looks like in English reviews, I'm seeing up to 23 hours. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a lot of people have seen like mm -hmm. 7 or 8 hours to, to like 12, 15 hours on average. So might be yeah. a little bit more skewed if people played it in early access came back and then played it after that game time yeah. is yeah. going to cross over so that, that's going to be a tougher metric to follow on that yeah yeah apparently some of the backstories which isn't surprising considering this is about eastern uh demons and such uh some of the backgrounds are extremely messed up <laughs> like some of the background stories for the various demons um yeah, which I'm would not surprised that that would be the case <laughs> for anyone who's kind of genre savvy. Uh, 
but wow, it, it just very artistic. This is another one of those games where I feel like you could take a screenshot almost anywhere and it would look mm. nice. Yeah. So very cool. Eastern Exorcist. Uh, next up from Thursday, July 8th, we have Boomerang X. I'm going to give it to you. Um, harness the power of a mystical boomerang to fling yourself through the air. Slice, fly, and blast through arenas swarming with evil creatures. Stay agile or meet your doom. The aesthetic reminds me of a lot of the creature in the well. Well, who made this? Dang. Okay, dang didn't make that. Dang. <laughs> but it, yeah, it looks like it, it has an art style that's very similar to creature in the well. I like it though. Yeah, it is. It kind of, it kind of got the hand colored in vibe. Mm-hmm. Let me see. So is it? This is a first person. It looks like first person, and you get a glaive. That's not a boomerang. That is a glaive. But okay. <laughs> um, and you throw glaives. That looks kind of okay, fun. Okay, boomer. Okay, yeah. okay, boomer. <laughs> rang, rang. <laughs> so funny. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I like the style. Um, they they did a really clever thing with having the monsters all be like just ink inky black, where because the backgrounds are all very colorful, and so in order yeah. to make sure the enemies stand out, they just kind of went so they have all the color in the environment and just the creatures be black. That was a, that was a really clever visual cue to help you find them because this yeah. is very visually busy. Yeah, last, last time I saw something like that, and I, I remember as a kid, I originally didn't like it, but as I got older, it made more sense, was uh, playing uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Because mm -hmm. mo most of the enemies uh, started picking up a darker uh, darker tone to stand out against the, the, the vibrant background. And it was like, oh man, why, why are y'all so dark and just meh mm -hmm. anymore? But it now makes so much more sense to me. Yeah. Isn't it in um, Samurai Jack where they're all the enemies are all like black and they have those? Oh, red the demons. Eyes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So it reminds yeah it reminds me a bit of that. I I really do like the style of it. It looks really unique. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it looks quite fast paced as well. It looks it looks fun. It looks fun. It does. And and it's standing at um, ninety three percent positive with eighty eight user reviews. Yep. And it's sixteen pounds seventy nine. Um, I'm curious how long this is because I'm seeing like mm -hmm. maybe two to four hours, but mm -hmm. you know, um, it's only been released recently. That is true. Um, Devolver Digital does release some games that are fairly short. Like if you remember, um, uh, my friend Pedro, uh, mm -hmm. that one's like yeah. only like five hours. Um, right, right. I think that's yeah, if you stretch it sure. out a bit. It's very short, and of course they sell it for twenty dollars. But they are Devolver Digital, and Devolver Digital yeah. doesn't typically publish bad games. So yeah. I, I don't think they've ever published a bad game. They've they've published some mediocre games, but they've they've never published bad games. So um, that's that's I guess that's the premium you get with Devolver Digital. <laughs> you know you're gonna get a good product, um, but it's gonna be that like triple A premium price of twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All but, right, what have you got for us next? Oh, yeah. And, of course, the developer is from Troy, New York. Um, next up is Nemesis uh, Mysterious Journey 3. So is there a Mysterious Journey 1 and 2 as well on Steam? I, I don't know. Not, not, not that can see, no. Uh, um, okay. <laughs> uh, this one does have a prologue version. But uh, Nemesis uh, Mysterious Journey 3 is a puzzle adventure game in which two tourists, Bogard and Amia, uh, find themselves engaged in a series of mysterious events, solve intriguing puzzles, and unfold a story which will keep you on the edge of your seat until the very end. I wonder if this is like Trolls 2, <laughs> where like, there's no, there is no Trolls 1. <laughs> so, um, this is Nemesis 3, there is no 1 and 2. Um, and it looks it looks really interesting, and it I'm, does. I'm curious as to kind of kind of um, Bioshocky. Yeah, I'm curious as to how this plays. Um, 
It is a sequel, but it wasn't called Nemesis. It was uh, Schism, Mysterious Journey, and then Schism 2 Chameleon. Oh! This oh, so a, a Mysterious Journey is the title, and Nemesis, which is the subtitle, is, is put is in the front. the tagline, yeah. Hmm, yep. okay. <laughs> yeah, but I just I just did a, li- right. a little bit of the did a little bit of the Google the Google. Okay, so yeah. it's a mysterious journey. All right, that's why I couldn't find Nemesis one and two. It's it's a mysterious journey one and two. Okay. So is it kind of like um uh is it does it play like Bioshock that kind of action but av- puzzle adventure game or is it more kind of point and click? adventure game it's in the tags it's saying point and click let me read right. reviews let me see yeah because i was gonna say wa- watching trailer and everything i'm getting more like the witness style mm. gameplay of like walking around not a ton of like yeah yeah it's like walk up click on something and start working on the puzzle it's not yeah, mac- I, w- I wish yeah i wish they would say like more clearly you know what I mean? What you're doing, rather than. But there is a free prologue, so you could try it and find out. Well, I could. I could indeed. <laughs> but I'm not going to now. No. <laughs> I will bury them into the ground like those kids at the university. <laughs> uh, uh, it does seem like it's very much a first-person point-and-click game. Right. Um, okay. cuz I'm reading through it's there, uh, there's no mention of action it's just puzzles. Uh okay. one reviewer is recommending you play it on hard. Um uh a lot of people are comparing it to Mist and then there's one negative review that like it tricks you into thinking that it's like Mist and then it's just <laughs> not um yeah, figure out what the bleep the developer wants from you. That's the puzzles. Um at least what they're complaining. <laughs> But other people yes. have said they can solve the puzzles without any help, so... Um, that, that is, uh, like, a valid criticism, yeah. because, so, especially with, like, point-and-click games, it's like, sometimes it, you get these puzzles that, uh, you, you one that's, like, moon logic, but also ones that is, like, only makes sense in the ga- in the dev's mind, mm. you know, it's, yep. which is, like, ugh, so annoying, so... Yeah, I, I I might give the prologue a go and see see mm. how I, I feel about this. But yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued. Um, there are seven seventeen user reviews and it stands at eighty two percent positive, and it's thirteen pound ninety four with ten percent off currently. Yep, seventeen ninety nine USD. Um, another ca- another game that knows how to count to three, unlike Valve. Me. Um, unlike Valve, another game that can count to three is Crash Drive 3. Uh, are you ready for THE car stunting playground? Oh, wait, hold on here. Sorry. Um, no. Uh, all right, close enough. Are you ready for the car stunting playground? Experience ridiculous fun of this cross-platform multiplayer free roaming game. Drive monster trucks, tanks, and more amazing vehicles across a huge open world. Level up, play events, earn cash, unlock new cars, and discover cheap secrets in Crash Drive 3. Have you ever seen, have you ever heard the um, <laughs> Spanish language monster truck commercials? Oh no, no! I've only I've only, I've only heard the over the top American ones. Mucho grande famoso! Like it's so, like it's so, with all the echo effects on it. Sunday, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Domingo, Domingo, Domingo! It's so good. Yeah. Like, for some reason, uh, like on the West Coast, like monster trucks is just a really big thing with the Latino community there. Just a huge we, deal. Um, yeah. We, we, it used to be really popular around here, but um, we there, there was an unfortunate death a few years back mm-hmm. uh, in Madison, so it kind Ooh. of fell around here. Mm-hmm. So it kind of kind of toned it down. I don't know of yeah. any significant loss of life on the West Coast. There's been some injuries, but for the most part, like it's still kind of a big deal. So uh, they they didn't block off one of the entrance ways, and someone walked out of the tunnel <sighs> and just. Oh yeah. Oh, that's yeah, bad. We, yeah, that's yeah, bad. It was, it, I've it was, never it heard was, of that happening. That's wow. Oh, you didn't? Because yeah, that, that thing was no. national news. Oh, it was? Okay, yeah. We didn't we didn't hear about that because it's kind of like a local league on the West Coast. So uh, I don't think it is. But yeah. But yeah, this looks but, really hey, fun. What about ca- Crash Drive? Yeah, yeah, Crash Drive. Yeah, enough about like 
unfortunate death and destruction. But Crash Drive 3 looks uh, arcadey. I like... Uh, me and racing games have a relationship where, like, the more arcadey it is, the more I'm going to enjoy it. Like, yep. it's kind of like that that axis. If it's... But the less arcadey becomes, the more I'm going to not like it. <laughs> and my, this one my, seems my, very arcadey. My cutoff on racing games is Need for Speed Underground. Like the, mm. the the old school underground underground two series where it was like mm. over the top slight slight realistic with the vehicles but still arcade action. Mm. Mm-hmm. That that's my cutoff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the, just me and Forza don't have a good relationship. No. But mm-hmm. Forza Horizon can sometimes be good depending on what game modes they include. And this one um, seems to just have a ton of different game modes. The the Forza where they had the Hot Wheels tracks that that was a blast. <laughs> that would be fun. That that, that was a hoot. It, it was still like Forza hard, but it was still it was so fun. Yeah. Uh, Crash Air Three it seems to have a pretty good aesthetic. I like I'm not annoyed by anything. There is the UI that they've got for like to show you the direction. That's kind of amateur looking, but it's still fine. Um, you know, the sort of green glowy or the red glowy. Forza does that too. Oh, and it doesn't look good. <laughs> but um, I, but it matches this more because it is arcadey looking. So in inside the uh, like the garage setup, uh, they're, they're, especially on one of them, it's showing like the screenshot for the Pimp Mobile. Um, something about it. I don't know if it's just that car in particular. It looks cheap. It just. <laughs> I don't know, like, the the, te- the texture used at times is just off to me. Mm-hmm. Um, like, the the background looks great, the car looks beyond fake. Does this have online? It does have online PvP, so that's good. And cross-platform multiplayer, so that's, uh, that definitely makes me more interested in picking it up, knowing that it just kind of has online multiplayer. This, yeah, this, this looks like a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, pick up play lots of fun uh don't have to be like super acting, serious like, with, yeah yeah super serious so yeah it's 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 great it looks great um it's standing out 100 percent positive with 11 user reviews and it's currently 25 percent off right now at 11 pound 24 yep 14.99 us okay that is Crash Drive 3. And to our final day, Friday, July 9th, we're going to start off with uh, Legend of Homebody. The simple game of a shut-in learning from home and earn money. The game is purely fictional. Do not try this out in reality. This is a somewhat serious and heavy game, so don't be fooled by appearances. I appreciate yeah, that they give that warning, because sometimes these really, like, fluffy, nice-looking games, like, like yeah. all cozy, and it's like, oh, this looks so sweet. And then, you know, it, you know, does Based the whole... euthanasia. Yeah, yeah. You can remember, yeah. <laughs> and then there's sudden, then you're suddenly watching Madoka Magica, and you're like, oh, this is so <laughs> sad. More. Yeah. So, um, we spoke about this game two years ago. Oh, we did. We did. I will put a link link um, to an old episode here. It was episode 14 that we spoke about it. Oh, it was early so then, access back then, right? Yeah. Um, so this was in early access. And it's now... Because it was um, like in Japanese. Or, uh, or, Chinese, I think. Oh, Chinese. Chinese. Yeah, it was in, in Chinese. And so it was... Um, uh, we were saying... This game looks really, really interesting. And we hope that they bring it out in English. And they've done that. Yep. They've done that. So um, it's it's a game that I've I've been following and um, I'm super excited to to like play play it. Um, and there is there is a demo, so mm-hmm. hopefully I'm not I'm not gonna be uh, disappointed. But yeah, I, I do like the way it looks. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious, and it is standing at very positive with 82% news, uh, 82 uh, percent with 237 user reviews. Um, but like anything that comes out of early access, it's gone down at uh, with uh, 76% with 13 user reviews. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me see. So this, the developer says, is their third project. They've also developed uh, 
me see. They've also developed the adventure and his backpack and the legend of merchant. Um, aesthetically, I think this there's a there's kind of a clear progression of uh, aesthetics. Oh yeah, definitely. And um, I'm that they I'm glad they brought it out in English because they did say if it does well in early access, they were going to get mm. a translator. So. Yeah, I think some of their older games are still only available in Chinese. So yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So thank you, thank you for yeah. bringing this uh, uh, in, in English. I will, I will and it, it's only um, twenty five percent off right now at three pound fifty nine. Worth worth picking up. Yeah, I, feel. I don't think uh, I don't think uh, a game not being in English is a reason for it to not be on Steam. But if you do release it. In, on Steam, I think to, for the best visibility for the international audience, which English is the dominant language, uh, maybe do have it in early access when you hike, have it just in your local language and it's not available in English. Because that way, when it does come out in English, you can have a second fanfare. It's like, available in English now, kind of thing. Yep. I, think that's, I think that is a situation where early access, I think, is a fair thing to put it in for that. If you have yep. other languages, particularly major languages like English, French, Spanish, they want it's to get still it out to come eventually. On it. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. And then, yeah, I, I'm just happy it has a demo as well. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Give it a shot, but uh, US uh, uh, 449 US uh, 599 regular yeah. price. Very reasonable. Very. Uh, okay, next up we have another student developed game, Plokoth. Time to trash these nerds. Um, <laughs> Plokoth is an atmospheric 2D platforming game set in a mysterious jungle. Mm -hmm. I wish they gave a bit more about what it's yeah. about. So the, um, the main character is named Pho or Pho. I don't know um, if it's like Pho the noodle or just Pho. But he is, he is going after a bowl of noodles. Yes. And he's looking for a cure, I think. So from that what I understand. That infected his girlfriend off. Because, yeah, I, I thought it was Plo, uh, but I'm terrible, just normal American like that. Uh, oh no! It is Plo. It is Plo. It's not Foe. Sorry. I guess I saw. Uh, I was putting an H in there. What in the world? Dude? Sorry. Uh, Plo goes on a journey to destroy the core of a horrible disease that infected his girlfriend off. Uh, off is an atmospheric 2D platforming game set in a mysterious jungle. They could have taken that first sentence and thrown it into the the, the thumbnail description. And yeah. Mm -hmm. That that would have been better than. Yeah, you don't get yeah. any story in the description. You do have a bit of a bigger word limit. Just don't make sure it doesn't get to the whole cutoff point, because that's yeah. annoying. Yeah, it, it seems like the actual writing of the story... Like, I, I'm, I'm coming down to, like, the about this story. They live together in the jungle. It's very basic writing early on. Mm -hmm. of mm. Someone who's not textually descriptive. But when I'm looking yeah. at the, the, the art, the gameplay, and everything... They're really good in that realm. Yeah, like, it's this gorgeous. Is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It just might 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 struggle with their words a little bit. Mm -hmm. I suspect that there's not even any words in the game. Mm. Oh, same. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's just gonna. I think it's just gonna be like uh, environmental storytelling and gameplay storytelling. Cause, well, uh, if it's, I hope it's not an, an upsetting ending or anything. Because it's like the first screenshot you have and of her. Oh yeah, it's just yeah. like Aww. Aww, that's sad. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, the game is free. Yep, it is free. The it's developed by students. So, um, and it's uh, there's 50 user reviews, and it's standing at 82 percent positive. Not Where's bad. Where's I thought you were saying it was at fifty percent off right now. That's oh, where my brain went to. It's like, wait, fifty percent free? Fifty percent free? What? How do I do that? How does it work? <laughs> I and think that's such a brain fart. Now our final game is Lona: Realm of Colors. This is where I would read the description, but I'm not <laughs> ahead like I normally am. Do we beat me by a step? So welcome to the loading song. Load a Realm of Colors is a point and click adventure in nature, focusing on art and narration, instead of fetch puzzles and dialogue. Each level is an abstraction of Lona's story, and it's up to you to bring peace and balance to her painting and find out what has happened to her. Congrats on your dedication <laughs> to the bit. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go pass out. Uh, it's got a really nice uh, look to it, like the cutscenes and the um, and uh, some of the environment art. But I'm am I confusing this with another game? Oh yeah, I am confusing with this with another game. I was thinking there was going to be like a shmup scene, and then it's like no, that was a game that I didn't include in this list. Oh, <laughs> so so in a, in a few of the screenshots, especially after you're talking about uh, uh Gris, mm-hmm. or or like Gree or um whatever that one turns out to be, I'm I'm kind of getting that vibe, but now this has yeah. some more darks and purples. Yeah, the issue I have with it is there's definitely some frame skips in the preview and i'm mildly concerned whether those are going to be bothersome because some this is clearly not meant to be a high frames game it's supposed to be like you're supposed to see the progression of the art or whatever um so it's not it's not smooth it's not supposed to be smooth it's supposed to have like this was my first attempt this is my next attempt this is my third attempt kind of thing of of art but um i am curious if like panning and stuff is gonna be like jittery jittery yeah yeah yeah, I'm, I'm curious. It's, it, it's, you know, I really like point and click games, and mm-hmm. it looks very interesting. But mm-hmm. um, I, I don't know if I want to be left on a downer. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, it's. Yeah. <sighs> I get too, I get too many of those, and it's just like, oh my oh. god, no, I can't, I can't be dealing with that. And this has pressed all the time now, games. Mm. Bring, lift mm. me up, dang it. And this has yeah. four negative reviews and three positive reviews, though. Um, Ooh, okay. it's a wordless story, apparently. Uh, right. Do 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 do. They're saying it's calming. Okay, they are saying that the game is calming. Okay, and hey, comforting. The, so, so this is this is really interesting. So it also says in the negative reviews, it says really disappointing. Game has adorable graphics and the music is chill, but these are about the only things going for it. Uh, Lona is a, a static puzzler, not in any sense a point-and-click adventure. There is no character who walks around, no dialogue, and any story such as there is is impressionistic and implied. Each puzzle tableau has a light dark side, which is to say that there are two images based broadly on the same picture that you can click between. Collected objects can move between these two images until the overall tableau is solved. Depending on how you count these, there are only seven or so, typically with only one significant puzzle each and a little bit of shuffling things around. So yeah, it's not really a point and click then. Okay, and I'm not really hearing what the negative was. I suppose maybe the reviewer might be dissatisfied with the price then. If it, how long um, did they play it? They they played an hour, like okay. nearly an hour and a half. Um, and it's eleven dollars so, and four cents right now. So, so they said, assuming you, that you don't get stuck on one of the horrible puzzles, the game is only good for about sixty minutes, which in the end turned out to be a huge relief. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yeah, it's, yeah. The, they didn't like the puzzles, basically. Mm-hmm. No. Um, yeah. So it is pretty, but it is very short for the price, and yeah. uh, it's uh, and it's not a point to click. It's more of just a puzzle thing. Yeah. Yeah. It it sounds like almost like a hidden object kind of game. Mm-hmm. And a hidden object puzzler kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's fifteen uh, percent off right now at eight pound seventy four, and there's only three uh, user reviews, so we don't have the full thing. Yep. Okay. And it's developed by Space Fox Studio, which is a team out of Sweden. And with that, that is our uh, release list. So the question now is, what was the best of the week? It's gonna be hard now. Let me see. The very best. I have. I have my. You. You've got yours ready. Okay, Rody, start yes. us up. I. I. Uh, from the catch-up list, I'm gonna have to go with the unfinished Swan. Um, even though it's uh, a re-release, it's um, it's one I didn't initially pick up, so I might uh, have to change that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it and it's uh, and it's also reminded us that the people who did um, the um. Edith Finch game, they haven't really brought out anything else, and which is a shame. Yeah. yeah. And uh, my 
second on the list. I, I you know, because of uh, this, you know, everything, uh, the Steam, the Steam sale. I already had the list on my wish list, so oh. that, that's defi definitely, you know, um, a game that I want to pick up. That that would be a game that I want to pick up. Another game that I am curious about is um, Legend of Homebody. That is that is another one that's that, but that I've been following that another game I've been following for a while as well. So yeah. Okay, awesome. Uh, what about you, Tom? Uh, out of the catch-up list, um, I, I'm i going to go with Stones of the Revenant uh, as, as my game uh, game of the week in the catch-up list. It just... The, 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 chibi, the, the chibi character's art style, the, the gameplay looks really smooth. Um, Unfinished One would have been my, my close second, uh, but seeing that one's about a decade old, I'm kind of going to leave that one off. Colony Siege could have been better if I was like 10 years younger <laughs> and if, uh, the background wasn't so just bleh. Um, into the main list, um, I, I, I ended up putting three, uh, actually put three games on my wish list, which is rare for me. Normally it, it, one or none on a week. Uh, but I, I'm probably going to give my game of the week to stand by me. Uh, the, 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 the physics, the, the physics style movement, uh, moving around. I, uh, I'm a, I'm a sucker for these types of games. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if it's, uh, big enough to take down my love of Super Magbot, but it still looks good enough to warn, warn to play through at some point. Um, and I, uh, I, I also put on my wish list one because it was free, the, uh, the Ploka. Because I, I really, I really want to see more about that one, um, and the list is, uh, Ro Ro Rody kind of sucked me into the world of FMV um, with uh, not for broadcast. And now you can't get out. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm very curious. And plus, um, there, there, there was a, a board game uh, video that we did, and Ro Rody was a part of that one that I ruined her for board games ever since. Uh, Detective, <laughs> uh, a modern crime mm. board game that uh, I, I really like that game, even though it's very mental heavy. Mm. <laughs> that I'm like, oh man, if, if this has any sort of mystery like that, I'm all for it. Absolutely. Um, all right, so for my list, I actually didn't partic, none of the ketchup actually really caught my eye, um, but I even, do- Not even stones. <laughs> nah, I it's it's got a nice it's got a nice style to it, but I just don't think I'm into that game type right now. Yeah. Um yeah. but from Thursday, July eighth, this is my runner up, uh Boomerang X. Um Ooh. it's my runner up. I just kinda like the action. It looks it looks really nice. It's a devolver digital game, so that's almost an instant wish list uh, game for me. Uh but the my number one has to be just because I'm really curious is Eastern Exorcist and that one was uh, mm. was an ad. I do like the 2D action. I do really like 2D action games, and the fact that it looks good. Yeah, and the fact that reviewers have been brought in, being bringing up like the story, like the fact you kind of get the story, the really kind of sad stories and twisted stories of the villains and the heroes. I like that, especially coming from I really like Mushishi and Natsumi Yujin Show, and uh, there's a lot of anime where it's basically like, let's make you feel sad or, or, or horrified about like what this thing came from. There's a ton of series that are like that, and I'm like, ooh, maybe this could be like a video game version of that. That is the only reason it didn't go on my wish list. Like every yeah. everything else to it, like how it looked, mm -hmm. I, I was about ready to like jump on board. But when it when you start going into like how dark it can get, yeah. like, no, no, yeah. I, I I don't really need super dark right now. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Yeah. So I'm really curious to check it out. I like that there's multiple playable characters and just this. It just really kind of seems to dive into a lot of Chinese mythology. So yeah. Um, so yeah, Eastern Exorcist is my game of the week. With Yay. that, um, Rudy, you had some stuff to bring up before yes, the end yes, of the show, yes. yes? 
so so sh shall we go through what I picked up during this? Okay, let's. The same? This is a, a special section this week called Brody's <laughs> Hall. Um. <laughs> right, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Okay. All right. So, I picked up the Dark Side of the Moon, uh, the FMV game that looks like it has slightly off uh, acting with the main character. Um, I'm I'm all for that. I'm glad I picked that up. I'm definitely gonna play that at some point on um, on stream and hopefully have a really good laugh with it. Um, but yeah, this story looks super interesting and I can't wait can't wait to, to play it because it looks like it's also been done in lockdown as well, like certain aspects of it. So yeah, that should be should be interesting. Um, I also picked up essays on empathy. Um, so yeah, it's I I'm not sure if I'd be allowed to play that on um, stream because oh, because some of the content, yeah, yeah, some some of the content. But I'll, I'll have a look and hopefully I won't get kicked off. But yeah, there's yeah. like several narrative experiences in there so i think that was yeah. like definitely worth picking up it looked in it looked interesting and i love those kind of narrative games um i also picked up dude stop um which is one of those kind of um uh funny kind of almost like a puzzler um and you're just trying to annoy the 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 game or something <laughs> so so yeah i i it looks interesting. I never, I haven't seen a um, a game quite like that. So yeah, I, I'm, I, I, I definitely want to. There was another that. game that was brought up by some uh, some of the indie YouTubers, and it was the opposite of this, where it's all about like your OCD. So you're basically like making everything look uh, symmetrical and oh. like match and match stuff. There's, I forget what that game's called, but it's like there's some complex puzzles because it takes a bit. Of additional thinking to how would this like look right but then there's others where it's like oh just just tilt that way there we go <laughs> <laughs> this, <laughs> there's a game that's kind of the opposite of this nice uh the next one i picked up is rain swept i'm a little bit nervous about playing this one because um sincerely day told me after i picked this up that she started to play this on stream i think and then there was a game breaking bug and she told the developers like two years like two years ago because i think she got it when it came, came oh out. i can't find it how's and, it spelled a uh, rain swept um, oh rain swept uh, yeah and um it's uh and they haven't like fixed it so i'm like bit Nervous, nervous. Mm -hmm. that I'm going to, I'm going to just like start enjoying it, and then I come across this game breaking bug. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, but it looks, it looks really interesting. It, it, it definitely like ticks a lot of boxes for me. So yeah, I'm, I do like me a, a murder mystery. Um, I picked up um Archio, Archio, uh, Sh Shinar. Um, A R C H E O. It's one that we spoke about on the oh. podcast, and it just looked interesting because I didn't know quite what it was all about. <laughs> it looks like a, a kind of like a management game, and mm. I really do like the the way it looks. So I'm looking forward to like playing that and um, getting back to you on my thoughts about it and everything. So yeah, but it, it looks it. I, I really do like the style of it. Um, Another FMV that I picked up was Interrogation Files. Um, Port uh, Lands Landsend. Or oh, Landsend. Oh, yeah. okay. We talked about this one. I remember it. Yeah, it looks like a, a sort of like jank um, her, basically. It, it just, you know, the, you can tell like there are like the bad actors in it and there's just like this old lady who looks like she's really getting into it and it's just like oh so it looks so so good <laughs> like so bad it's so good. camp like, yeah yeah completely it's people really camping it up i can't wait um the next one is howdy jacob i mean puppetry 
puppetry, Dewey. There is puppetry. We F and V puppetry. This. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so this is um this is actually a hidden object game. Mm-hmm. First when we looked at this, I wasn't quite sure, but yeah, it's like there's a, a puppetry and it's um kind of weird stuff going on. So yeah, I'm I'm all I'm all for this and. Um, um, I, I, I'm, I might play this. I'll probably play this on stream. I'll probably play this on stream. Mm-hmm. Um, I picked up um, Nexamon. I picked up that. Um, uh, which one did you pick up? The first one? Just, just the first one. Just the first one. And I picked that up. Pick that up. Play it. See how I feel about it. And maybe pick up the second one. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. This is um, I do. I picked up Crash Auto Drive as well. Um, I, you know, I like my visual novels, and this seemed like quite interesting. I'm curious to see how it's going to end. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite. Oh, this quite is about curious. the one that a guy gets killed that everyone disliked him, and so everyone had yeah. a motive to hurt him. So. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Um. I picked up also uh, Tiny Room Stories because in the sale it seemed like a reasonable price and even and I have played the first part of it on mobile but I didn't want to like drop like keep paying to unlock mm-hmm, mm-hmm. chapters so paying just all in one is makes sense because I think the chapters were more expensive paying each chapter was more expensive on the mobile mm-hmm. and then I picked up Fate of Kai um, which is one we, we spoke about, I think, a few weeks ago. But yeah, this is like a choose-your-own-adventure. Oh, yeah, um, the comic book, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, curious curious about this one. Uh, I heard it was very good. And I did pick up three more games, and hopefully I'll speak about those next week. Oh, next week, okay, after you've played them? Yes, yes, yes. So, right. so yeah, I... I I uh, did my my wallet got damaged quite severely. Yeah, quite you severely. Uh, you made up for both of us, I think. So. Y- yes. <laughs> no kidding. Yes, and, uh, and uh, just just why I have your attention, my friend does have a Kickstarter up. If you do like um, point and click games, and and you were back in the day really like Simon the Sorcerer, he has um, a game out um, called. Um, plot of the druid and he's been working on it for five years and it's at a really good stage now and he's just be like finishing it up so part of the uh, druid oh no part of the druid and he's very 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 close to to reaching goal there's 10 days to go on it i hope it gets funded and i hope there are a few uh, stretch goals that have been met as well. So yeah, so if you're interested, um, like uh, that, help him help him kickstart it. Oh uh-huh, hi, I found it. So right now, um, yeah. So ten days to go, twenty two thousand dollars out of the uh, out of the twenty five thousand. So and yeah, I got to play it. I got, I did get to play it a, a bit. He, because he dropped me one of the um, the builds for it. It's very good. It's uh, it's like quite good, and the and it's fun, funny as well. It's pretty funny. You can tell he's put a lot of a lot of work into it. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah, uh, hopefully for those of you interested, uh, if you want to help uh, Yakir get up to twenty five thousand. Uh, do stop by. It is Plot of the Druid on Kickstarter. Uh, if you're looking for a new um, point-and-click game. That's really cool. Alrighty, with all of that, now we've just got to ask what, uh, we're going to say our farewells, and, but first we're going to ask like, Rody Pie, what, uh, where can the internet find you? What are your plans this week? I, I did do I did do a scrim shram on the on the Monday, so I don't know. Maybe uh maybe this week maybe this week you'll see me do another stream. Uh maybe you'll see me do a joint stream with someone. Who knows? Maybe that's gonna happen. But yeah, we're hopeful. We, we're we, hopeful. we still gotta work out some details, but <laughs> we're hopeful. <laughs> but you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash pie and of course you can see me on here every week. 
Doop. And of course, let me see. Uh, whoop, wrong page. There we go. Uh, and of course, uh, Tom, Radio Tom, where Hi. can the internet find uh, you? You can find me uh, in Dewey's basement uh, if he if he ever lets me out. Um, I'm I'm on here um, every every so many Sundays. I uh, I'm, I'm, I'm making an appearance from the basement. Otherwise, you can find me twitch.tv slash the radio tom. You can find me Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We're going to be starting up the uh, Batman Arkham City series for Monday and Wednesdays. Friday uh, is still up in the air. Uh, it was a debate between Super Magbot or uh, if I can get Rhodey on Friday for our mystery project. Um, we'll see about that one. On Tuesdays, Thursdays, I release a new video over on YouTube. You can also find that over at uh, the the Radio Tom or on this link. Boom, right there. Oh, uh, we're we're only 13 subs away from the 100, so I can clean up that evil URL. Oh, um, nice. On Tuesdays, we're currently working through uh, the game The Room, uh, the the ones that we just picked up. We got episode one already out. Episode two comes out this tuesday we uh just put up a gameplay video of myself and our friend the brambles playing the stardew valley board game that came out on thursday and this coming thursday uh i have brambles once again and we uh played a round of the uh chess light uh game onitama game that i could teach you how to play it in about mm -hmm. five minutes <laughs> Um, and each round of it takes anywhere from like 10 to 15 minutes. It's a very, very quick game, uh, but very, very satisfying. Also, one of the most reasonable board games I've ever picked up because in person, I think it was like 12 bucks. <laughs> like very, very inexpensive, but great, wonderful game called Onitama. Uh, that's coming out this Thursday. Nice. That's me. What about you, Dewey? Where can we find you? Yeah, you can find me, of course, right here at uh, twitch.tv slash DeweyBear. Um, and, of course, you can find uh, our YouTube channel at YouTube. You know, just search the Steam Release Podcast. We also don't have the like custom URL right now. But, of course, check out our curator page down at... Do, 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 do. I've got it. Copy. Paste right here our curator Yay! page check out all of our um all of our past reviews and impressions and of course uh we will be back next week uh with another guest so of and course don't forget to like and subscribe like and subscribe bye bye bye, bye. everyone